Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeat.com. So it's been a while since I put out one of these uh, videos, but uh, uh, I just want to remind everybody that uh, even though my channel's been around for a little while, that I'm still uh, a beginner hobbyist machinist, right? And I'm still learning as I go. And uh, this this uh, series, this uh, YouTube uh, shop student, uh, is usually, I, I sort of reserve these to give shout outs to people who've uh, showed me something that I either want to copy that, what they've done, uh, like a student, so to speak, um, or whatever. But a uh, little background. So I finally found a steady rest for my um, Atlas 10F lathe, and I've been reconditioning it. And part of that has required me to make uh, a little bit of hardware. Now, I'm not really going to go into the uh, steady rest in this video. That would be part of my uh, no another video to the Atlas 10F series. Uh, but I do want to talk about a uh, little uh, fixture or, or tool holding jig that I made called a uh, thin piece split collet. And I'll bring the uh, camera in here and, and get you a little closer to show you what I'm talking about. I need to make another one, uh, so I drew up some pictures. This is the uh, one that I made for the smaller ones, and then of course this is what I've done for the larger um, um, washer. So I'll bring in here and uh, we'll take a closer look and then maybe go over to the lathe and let's uh, make this thing. Okay, so as I've been uh, working on the steady rest, uh, reconditioning it, um, I had some hardware that was broken, right? So here you see a a washer that's split. There's, uh, these are some interesting washers here. You know, they're cut to uh, allow clearance on the um, steady rest. So I need to make a washer. I was missing one of the heavy washers, and um, in addition to needing another heavy washer on the steady rest, I need another heavy washer this size on um, on the uh, gear stud on my lathe. Now the interesting thing about my lathe is that it has this wrench. If I can find it here. Now, here it is. It has a wrench that has an 11 16 on one side and a 3 8 square on the other. So one of the things I've been doing is is uh, making some new set screws that were 3 8 square and I've had to make a couple jigs. And then when I went to make replacement washers, that's what these are for, right? I've got a couple there for goof ups if I need them. Um, I made this thin collet or I'm sorry, this thin piece split collet, you know, to hold and face down thin pieces like washers. Now, the first person I seen make one of these was Tinker John. So the big shout out to Tinker John. Thank you, sir, for uh, sharing this with us. And hopefully I'll do it justice. And uh, this is sort of my rough notes and drawing on the first one done. I don't know if the lights will wash it out or not. So, but now I need another one for these here because these are one inch OD washers. And... Um, 3 8 uh, ID or clearance hole for 3 8 um, They're about an eighth inch thick, actually a little more, maybe 130 thou or so thick, and they got a bevel on the top uh, as a finished washer. So I thought I would go ahead and um, see if I can get that in frame. Do a little drawing here of uh, what this looks like, and and uh, of course my the printed lines I felt were too light so I sort of drew hand drew over these so if it's a little sloppy please forgive me but you'll see that um, it has a, uh, a one inch uh, opening recessed opening right recessed by uh, about a sixteenth of an inch these measurements here aren't super critical um, it will be split and then that way it can pinch on the OD of the one inch washers now I've cut off some blanks that are going to be my washers and I'll do all the work on uh, on this little split collet. Okay so it's uh, got a clearance hole going through of uh, three quarters of an inch and uh, overall outside diameter is an inch and a half. Um, the gripping part this here is an inch and a quarter and uh, I happen to have a nice piece of uh, inch and a half um, 6061 uh, that, that will do just fine. So let's go check it over in the lathe and let's make this thing. Okay, so here's my plan of attack. I have inch and a half stock in the chuck, okay? And uh, hopefully the light doesn't wash this out too much. Um, my plan of attack is I'm going to turn down three quarters of an inch um, up to, or down to the diameter of inch and a quarter, okay? Hopefully you can see that. That's the part here that's gonna get chucked by the chuck when it's done and we'll have a about an eighth inch lip here to register against the chuck jaws uh, when it's done 
And then uh, once I have uh, that cut, uh, this, this here cut, I'm just going to leave the outside. I might just touch it enough just to clean it up. Um, but really, I mean, I want to try to stay as close to this inch and a half diameter that I got listed here. And that's what the stock is. And I'm using a three dog chuck. So it's not going to be perfect, but it's, it doesn't matter. Really, the only thing that matters is the size of this bore right here. Okay. And let's see, yeah, the size of this bore right here and uh, the depth, right? I have to know how deep it is and uh, it has to be bored to a certain size in order to be usable for a collet, okay? And then um, we'll turn around and we'll do, the, uh, we'll do the drilling operations, the facing and the boring and, and go from there. So let's, uh, I'm gonna start off by facing and, and turning down the uh, three quarter inch diameter and probably just brushing the outside. I'm gonna turn down, uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna turn this uh, inch and a quarter diameter down to three quarter inch long, okay? So it can be turned around and chucked up in the, in the jaw. So let's get started. <laughs> Every job starts with a with facing. Just because I like to have a nice clean smooth bar. Okay. With that faced off. Let me get a marker here. We come up here about three quarters of an inch. And remember, I am a newbie at this stuff. So, like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to roughly mark it right there for a little kiss. Before I get too carried away, I just want to make sure this is where are we at here. Okay, it's an inch and three seventy-five, one and three eighths. We want to go down to one and a quarter. So. All right, I'm going to keep turning that down to this three quarter. And I'm going to point out another thing. I got my wedding band on. I'm going to take that off. Uh, I could get caught in something. It's a bad habit uh, I've gotten into leaving my ring on. I've, I've had plenty of folks, guys and girls out there say, hey, look, you, you're going to hurt yourself. So I remembered to take it off. And I've got a sign here uh, somewhere that I want to hang up above the lathe uh, and stuff just to remind me. So let me put this away. And uh, I'm going to turn this uh, down to three quarters of an inch. And uh, when I get down to the last pass or so, I'll, I'm sorry, three quarters of an inch for an inch and a quarter diameter. And when I get down to the last couple passes, I'll bring you in. Okay, guys, I'm getting close to diameter here. This should be an inch and a quarter. Uh, the exact doesn't, doesn't really matter, just close uh, for three quarters of an inch. I'm getting close, so we're going to take a couple more passes and finish this up. For cutting uh, lube, I'm just using some kerosene. Stinks a little bit, but I think it works real well. I pulled off just a little late on that one, didn't I? All right, let's uh, see where we're at here. Okay. I'm at 1, 2, 50, 60, 1, 261. I'm going to be at 1, let's see, what did I say, inch and a quarter? I want to be at an inch and a quarter, so I want to be at 1, 250, and I'm at 261, so I need to take 11 thou. I'm going to go ahead and dial that in, or try to. 
it's going to be about there. And again, like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's just uh, because I'm new, I try to I try to strive for you know getting at least close to the mark. You know, try to get better at that stuff. So when I do have something that requires a little more precision, maybe maybe I'll hit my mark. All right, so this should be the last pass on this. Okay, let's uh, see how close we got that. And that's uh, 1, 250 on the nose. Let's see, I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Can, I don't know if that focuses. Focus, focus. Uh, well, anyway, I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, it's an inch and a quarter on the nose, so we're good there. So the only thing I want to do now is break this corner, and I want to back out and make sure I get a nice, sharp uh, shoulder here. So let's do that. Okay, I think I am just going to just bump this one. Okay, let's see what we got here. So if we look at our drawing, um, we just turned down this shoulder, okay? This needs to be about a quarter inch, so I'm going to come in with a parting tool and part this over just a little bit over a quarter inch. We're going to turn this around in the truck and in the chuck, not truck, <laughs> in the chuck and finish the operation. So let me uh, get the parting tool set up and uh, I'll catch you here in just a minute. Okay, guys, we're ready to part this piece off. Now I have my parting tool set perpendicular. Uh, to the piece that I want to cut and I sort of have it set in a little over a quarter inch to leave some room to facing off. I've slowed the gear down and I, I mean I slowed the lathe down and I've put it in back gear. So um, let's, uh, let's see if we can get this cut. I actually had to speed it up a little bit and uh, make sure I clear chips. Like I said, I, I've always had a hard time parting, uh, parting material off. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this bit is uh, parted off. We're gonna uh, remove the stock here and I'm gonna put this in the chuck so this can be faced off and uh, to, to length, drilled, and, um, and then finally bored. So, let me, uh, let me get this uh, cleaned up here a little bit and I'll bring you right back in. Okay, remember that I uh, part of this, this is a little over a quarter inch and like I said, I'm just looking for a quarter inch. It doesn't have to be perfect. Something on my scale and right now I'm about 3 16 um, So instead of facing it down to size right now, I just want to face this little nib off and just give a light facing cut across it. I'll actually uh, want to face it off with the boring bar before I start boring. So for right now, I'm gonna just give a light facing and then I'm gonna start drilling uh, some holes. And as a matter of fact, so we can see the plan. We see that um, there's a hole right here, three quarters inch, and we see it, it goes through. I guess we could see that it goes through the piece. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna drill this out. Um, this is not a precision hole or anything else, it's just a clearance hole to lighten up the, uh, the collet so that when you squeeze it, it will actually spring. So um, that's what I'm going to do now. Alright, I'm going to start with a center drill. So my bit has a good opportunity to get started straight.
All right, I'm going to start with a quarter inch bit. We're going to drill all the way through. Whenever you're deep hole and drilling, you want to uh, make sure you evacuate those chips. And again, like I said, this is uh, this is intended for new users, and and uh, this is just from a, a new user's perspective. So, any old timers out there uh, see where I'm doing something wrong or dangerous, let me know. Okay, so that quarter inch bit is all the way through. I think I'll step up in increments of eighth inch. So we'll go with three eighths next. Okay, that's the three eighths. So I'm gonna continue in this manner until I have uh, that drilled out to three quarter inch. I'll bring you in on the last uh, on the last drill. Okay, so this is the last bit. Uh, it's three quarters. I've slowed the lathe down. Uh, like I said, uh, so that's, I've only got a half horse motor on my lathe, so um, we're going to go ahead and take this last pass. Now this is just a drill finish. This uh, finish is unimportant. It's just a clearance hole and it's to thin the uh, collet up. Okay, that's all the way through. So let's get our prints and, uh, well let me get this out here and let's get our prints and take a look. Okay, so we have um, bored this hole all the way through, uh, three quarter inch diameter. Uh, let's see, I guess I'm holding this, I'm not sure if I'm holding it right for you or right for me, okay. Um, three quarter inch uh, diameter, it's bored all the way through, okay, just here by our drawing. So the next thing to do is, uh, we still need to face this off to width and it's a quarter inch, okay? And uh, we need to bore uh, a bore in here uh, a sixteenth of an inch deep and that bore will be one inch. So let me get the boring bar set up, get ready and I'll bring you back in. Okay, so I have the boring bar in. It's uh, just a little uh, uh, S10, it's a 10, 10 mil boring bar, small boring bar. It's one that I reviewed earlier. Um, so I'm going to use the um, boring bar to face this down. The reason why I'm going to do that is because once I'm done facing, I know that the tip of my boring tool is on the face of the part. And, it's, and I know that that's zero, and then I know I just need to go in 62 and a half thousandths toward the chuck. And uh, I know that uh, from that point, um, the depth of my bore should be good. So um, this the bore here doesn't have to be, or the this... Uh, diameter here or this um, length here doesn't have to be perfect I just want it close to a quarter inch I have about a sixteenth of an inch I can take off so let's get started on that all right let's see how close we're getting and uh, just a little bit more probably thirty second of an inch Okay, I'm gonna lock my carriage and I'm gonna feed the last little bit with uh, the compound. And like I said, this is not critical. I just want it close to a quarter inch. So just a little more to take off. And that's close enough. That's right at a quarter inch. All right, so now um, let me get some stuff adjusted and so you can see what I'm doing and I'm bringing right back in. All right, so what I've done was I've set my indicator up against the saddle uh, and set it to zero. This is what uh, uh, Richard from Making Something From Nothing would refer to as poor man's draw. okay? So now re remember that I faced the collet off with the boring bar, right? So the, the, the boring bar, the tip of the boring bar is right on the face and I wanna make a 62 thousandths or 63 thousandths um, bore. So I'm just going to move the boring bar so that it will um, clear and I'm going to unlock my carriage. Well, before I do that, let me move that out of the way. Okay, I'm going to unlock my carriage and we're going to dial in 
62 and a half or 63 give or take okay there's 60 one two three all right now I'm gonna lock the carriage right there and then um, now with that done I want to take my saddle stop we're gonna feed that right up against there I don't know if that how well that picks up hopefully it does and I'm just gonna tighten that Gonna make sure that that's up against it. It is and locked. It is. All right. Okay. Let me uh, get the camera removed back up where it goes there, so you can see the boring operation and uh, bring you right back. Okay. So we have everything in place and ready to bore. Um, I can unlock the saddle now because I'm going to use the saddle stop or the carriage stop to mark my depth, and um, we're about ready to go here. speed this up some okay let's uh let's bore this out okay i'm gonna keep uh poking at it like that until i get to the uh diameter i want remember i said i wanted one inch let's see where we're at let's do it like this Okay, it looks like I'm at 880 thou. So, so I still got 120 thou to go. I'll uh, bore some here, um, and when I get close, I'll bring you back in. Okay, so let's take a measurement here. Remember, this doesn't have to be perfect. I just want it as close as I can get it with these tools. All right, so this is like I'm at 9.99, right? So, pretty close to an inch. There's my inch stock. I probably it's wants to start all right I'm gonna take about another two thou out of it which would be just a thou on the uh, cross feed all right see what that gets us okay and that that popped in there so that's uh that's Perfect. Let's see what kind of, what we end up with the measurement here, at least with the calibers. And yeah, it looks like I'm at maybe 101, so I'm close. That's where I want to be, and it's going to be uh, just fine for where I want to. If the stock is just a few thousand smaller or, or a few thousand larger, it's okay. All right, so let's uh, let's knock this burr off of here. I like that. Now, before we take this out, we have to mark this, okay? And so the the tradition is that you mark it at jaw number one. Now my jaws have numbers on them, but they're on the inside, so I've taken a little punch mark and pricked one, two, and three on my on my jaws. I don't know if that shows up. Let me zoom back. Okay. So I've you know made little prick marks on jaws one, two, and three. So what I want to do is I want to take a uh, punch and try to by eyeball get in the center of jaw number one as I can. Just like that. Now I'm going to take a 
I'll just grab a transfer punch here and deepen that up just a little bit. Okay. All right, so jaw one has been marked on the collet. That way, when I go to put it back in, it uh, always it, it orients the same way, and and I keep as much accuracy as I can from the the chuck. Now, really, this only works with this chuck. You know, if I get a different chuck or if I change jaws, uh, all bets are off. Okay, so I want to come back over here between jaws two and three, and I'm just going to put a little mark here just to remind me I'm gonna try to go right in the middle of them okay and that's where I'm gonna split it so let me get the camera set up and uh, I'll meet you over at the vise okay so here's the collet as we've uh, made it the only thing left to do is and uh, you know, we've marked uh, the place for jaw number one so it's good the only thing left to do is to split this and then that when we put it in the uh, on the three jaw chuck it allowed that to squeeze in and clamp onto uh, a little piece that we're holding in there. So let's get this up in the vise. I'm just gonna clamp it in here and yeah I mean you don't have to be too too pandemic about it, too neat about it. I uh, the hacksaw and I we don't really get along well. Okay I'm gonna finish cutting that and uh, in half and I'll uh, bring you right back. Okay, here's my little cardio as, as uh, Mr. Pack Totem would put it. Make sure I'm in frame here. Alright, so that's cut. Not a very neat job. If I had a slitting saw and an arbor and something, you know, it could be neater. But I'll uh, clean up the burrs out of here and, um, and uh, it's ready to go and I'll tell you what, I'll bring you over to lathe and give you an idea how this works. So. Let me uh, clean up the burrs off of this and I'll catch you in just a second. Okay, so here's the little collet chuck, uh, thin piece collet chuck that we made. And there's a the little stamping for jaw one. This is jaw one. So I will put this in and I always tighten from the same jaw or same key as the one with the logo where the logo should go. And I'm just gonna center that dot up best I can in the uh, center of the chuck. And here's my piece of stock. I have to loosen that up. Okay, I'm just gonna barely snug that. Let me get my soft hammer. Okay, and bump this in. all the way in there. I'm just going to tighten this up. Now, even though that's only held by a sixteenth of an inch, that should be uh, more than strong enough to hold it, to face it off, to drill holes in it, whatever I got to do. And that's exactly what I got to do. And I don't know if... See it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's demonstrate. Feel like I'm at a weird angle. So there you have it. Now, obviously, I'm not done with this piece, but I just kicked you around. <laughs> obviously, I'm not done with this piece, but you get an idea how it works. So let me uh, bring the camera over and and uh, let's get. Uh, I got a parting thing to say or two. All right, folks. In closing, again, I want to thank Tinker John for initially showing this little project. I've made two of these things now. This one's for seven eighths, and this one's for one inch. And I think as I uh, keep these in my drawer they'll come in handy uh, as well as other little fixtures that I make from time to time um, but uh, I tell you what it's amazing how they grip I've uh, used the smaller one to cut seven eight thick washers 
and uh, I will use this one here to cut some one inch thick washers and um, drill them and face them to the size and everything else. So anyway, other than that, um, thank you for taking the time to watch. Sorry about kicking you around a while ago. I guess that's life. You know, you get so far, then somebody kicks you around. Uh, but anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to uh, comment. Um, if you like uh, this sort of content, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell. Um, and uh, any questions, uh, put them down in the comment section or feel free to email me at, at uh, Xavier at gtech.com. Uh, you can go to myheap.com and you hit the contact um, menu option at the top and you can email me there too. So other than that, have a blessed day.